particular piece, come and ask your instructor. Now the next step here is I have a round aluminum disc and round pieces, like I said before, are very easy to hold using this three jaw chuck. And I'm going to install this into the machine and I'm going to drill a hole in the center. Now the first thing I need to do is open up the jaws of this chuck so that it is the right the jaws are the right diameter away. And if you'll notice, there's tiny little grooves within these jaws. I'm going to place this little disc in there into those grooves because it'll grab easier. And I've tightened it up and I'm going to do a little test now. Rotate it by hand, make sure nothing touches. And when I turn it on, I'm going to have a look at it. Now that runs pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up using the tail stock and drill a hole. Now I have selected a drill chuck and I've installed a 3 16 drill in the chuck and I'm going to install that in the tailstock, wind it out about a centimeter, and gently slam it in. Now I'm going to wind back my tool post here so that my tool is not in the way and I'm going to slide the tailstock up just to within about a quarter inch of my piece that I'm going to drill the hole in. Now once I'm ready here, I'm going to turn the machine on and carefully advance the drill by turning the hand wheel on the tailstock and you'll see it begin to drill. Now I'm pushing gently here and just as I break through this thin piece on the other side, I lighten the pressure. Now I can look through the side here and I can see that my drill is now through my piece. I'm going to back it up, release the tailstock, and slide it back to that forward or reverse position. I'm going to turn the machine off and then inspect. Now remember, don't touch any of these pieces because quite often there'll be sharp edges on that. Whenever we cut a piece of metal, quite often the byproduct is a sharp edge. And if we don't uh, take any care, we're going to probably cut ourselves. Now, I have a piece of tubing here, and sometimes when we cut a piece of tubing, especially on the chop saw, it leaves a very sharp edge here, and sometimes it can be uneven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this piece up, and I'm going to take a cut off both faces. That's this edge. Now, I grab my chuck key, I'm going to place my piece in the vise, and I'm going to hold it out about a quarter inch from the end of the jaw. Once I have that secured, I'm going to rotate it by hand to make sure nothing hits it. I'm going to turn my machine on, and I'm going to take a cut off the close edge and face it. Go in and out, take a tiny little cut. Done, I'll turn it off and have an inspection. Now I mentioned earlier that I can turn the tool post. I'm going to turn it at a slight angle and retighten it. And that's going to allow me to now take another cut and cut the corner. So here we go. I'm going to cut the inside corner and the outside corner. Now I did this operation uh, so that I can remove any sharp edges. Previously in the first uh, example I showed you how I did that with the file. Sometimes, especially when you have a hollow piece, this is the only way to do it. So I pull that out and you'll notice that this piece comes free here and I have no sharp edges. Now this is, uh, will sit perfectly flat and will be, that will be convenient if we're going to weld uh, this in a vertical position or weld it to something else. And in this situation here, I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do it the other side. I'm going to leave my tool post the way it is, take a light cut off the outside, remove all examples of the saw marks. And now, with both sides done, if I take a, a ruler and measure one side and then measure the opposite width, they'll be identical, exactly the same.
Now I've showed you how to drill a hole in a disc, I've showed you how to face a piece of tubing, and I've showed you how to drill a hole. Now we're going to combine all of these because this is a piece of tubing that has two pieces welded to it and then ground off and I'm going to place it in here, drill a hole in it. And this would be what you would do if you're making a wheel or something that's going to rotate. I'll put this in here, slide it right up against the face of the chuck and check it for rotation. And it seems to work. I'm going to pull my tool, my carriage away because I don't need to take any cuts off it. I'm just going to drill a hole. I'm going to slide my carriage or my tailstock into location. Remember, it still has a drill bit in there. I'm going to lock it to the bed with the wrench, turn it on, and now I'm going to gently apply pressure and drill the hole in my wheel. Try that again. Now it's gone through the first side. I'm going to advance the drill until it comes to the next side. There we go. It's starting to drill through the other half of the wheel. And I'm just gently going to push. And I can feel it getting easier to go. That means I'm through the other side. I'm going to wind it back, turn my machine off, slide my tailstock back, and it looks like the hole is good on this side. I'm going to take it out of the chuck and look on the other side and there we go. We have a perfect hole and the advantage of this is it's now concentric, meaning the hole is in the center in relationship to the outside of my wheel. So when this rotates, it won't wobble. There's many other applications that we can do with the lathe, but these are a few most common ones in our shop. If you want to use the metal lathe, you should ask permission first. Now I've finished doing my job here and I'm probably going to clean up my tool so that the next person is, uh, has a clean machine to work from. Um, all the tools go back, some of these tools get stored just in front on the bench here and what we want to make sure is that nothing gets lost in the process. So here's another machine that you can add to your knowledge base and if you look around our shop we've got about a dozen machines, some of them ranging uh, from this bench top size to um, very large industrial size machines. And we choose a machine depending on the type of job we're doing. So now that uh, you've seen this, you're ready to use the metal lathe.